Hey guys, this is Cosino Art. I am Polly Laria Cosino, and this is a journey to your inner artist. Let's have some fun today. I'm going to teach you a technique. I call it search, copy, paste. It's a technique I kind of develop to help uh, my students when they're just starting out. It's a very good technique to find out what is it that you like, what kind of style do you relate to, what is it you want to try or do. Now, I'm surrounded by a bunch of beautiful art for a reason. Those are uh, all of the artworks made by my good friends or artists I admire or some of them are just artworks that I really really like. And today we are going to discover what is it that you like. Every single artist have their own unique style. And it's not just about their skill. It's not just about how well you paint or how confident is your stroke. In many ways, the uniqueness of our art is what's inside of us, what attracts us, what we are inspired by and what we connect to. And it doesn't always have to do with what kind of person you are. Things that inspire you, things that connect you they connect with you on such a deep level that a lot of times we can't even understand why is it. For example, I'm generally this kind of a cheerful person. Uh, I'm optimistic, you know, I like to hang out. I like to talk to people. Um, I'm positive, all about positive vibe and movement uh, and healing and all of the good things. And so people, when they think of me without seeing my art, usually they expect something bright or colorful or cheerful or cute, you know, like bunnies and all of the cheerful stuff. <laughs> and usually most of my friends uh, or relatives or whoever meets me before they see my art are very surprised um, to see my art because most of my art is actually quite dark and even scary sometimes. It's deep, I want to say it's deep, uh, it's thoughtful and a lot of people when they see my art without actually knowing me, they're kind of assume I'm that kind of person too. So that's quite interesting. So what I'm saying is that, you know, just because you're a cheerful person doesn't mean that that's what you connect to. That doesn't mean that your art is going to be like that. Because your personality is not everything. There's a lot of things about you and there's a lot of reasons why you connect with things that you do. There's a lot of personal experiences, personal preferences, and it's not only just about your character. Um, and that's why a lot of times we may connect with things that we didn't even expect or other people didn't expect us to. If you have a contrast, between who you are and what you connect with, don't be afraid to embrace that connection. Don't be afraid to still go for things that you like, go for things that you connect to. Even if you, I don't know, um, huge tough guy that does professional boxing, but you find yourself drawn to, I don't know, some cute animal art. There is nothing wrong with that. As well as, you know, like in my case, cheerful girl finds herself connected to a really dark stuff. <laughs> Embrace yourself because there, there is a reason why you connect. There is a reason why you like things that you do. And don't let the fear of being judged by other people stop you from exploring this part of yourself. I always found myself drawn to darker art, to darker beauty. Uh, even though my personality is considerably very different when you look at it from the outside. And when I was younger, my family was quite worried about it. My mom was worried about it. My friends were surprised and often, you know, even making jokes like maybe she's a secret serial killer or something. But, you know, it didn't stop me from keep following and connecting with what, what I love. I was still uh, checking a lot of beautiful dark art. I was experimenting. I was going there myself and creating that kind of art just because I connected with it. 
and I didn't expect people to like it or understand it and you shouldn't too because that's about your journey you're looking for yourself so don't let others stop you don't be afraid to be judged by your choices because that's none of anybody else's business it's all about you because we focus on you now let's do search I want you to go to a website called Pinterest this will be a part of your assignment uh, what I'm gonna be doing right now is you can either follow along as you watch me or you can wait and do this later because this is going to be a part of your homework assignment Pinterest is a really good website for all different kind of uh, image references I use it a lot many artists use it because it's a very convenient way to basically make those vision boards online and always have them with you okay so now I want you to create a board you can call it inspiration board you can call it art board you can call it things I like things that inspire me whatever you call it but make sure to give it a special name I always like to make those things special for me because when I make them special, when I even name them special, they are special to me. And so I end up saving more and more art that I like and going back to it and it generally helps me develop and grow. Now once you've created a board, it's time to start exploring. Let's start with something simple. I want you to pick a very general keyword like art, illustration, beautiful art, drawings, uh, you know, uh, it, it doesn't even have to be a drawing, you know, if you like resin art, type resin art, it can be very general, but it's good to start with something general, not something very specific yet. We will get to the specific part later. Now once you've typed it in, just start looking and scrolling through art. Look at all of those beautiful pictures. And while you look for them, pay attention to which pictures attract you the most. Which ones make you go, oh wow, this is so beautiful. Or which ones make you stop and open it. Now I want you to kind of take your time, look around and uh, pin those boards. So the way to pin it is actually quite easy. Uh, once you pick the image, there is this little pin button, so you just pin it, pin to board, and then you pick a board that you want to pin it to. That's uh, for those of you who haven't used Pinterest before. So then, I would like you to choose at least 10 images to put in your board. Try to get 10, 20 images at first to your board and let's use them for our first assignment. Okay, now you have your very own board. It's time for the copy phase. Okay, now I want you to set a timer for about one minute. And once you set it, uh, browse around this board you just created and see which images you like the most. Your goal here is just to pick one image. So just look around, see which one you like the most. If you picked it before the timer runs out, great. But, you know, a lot of times artists having trouble making a decision like that. So that's why timer is there for you. So whichever image you stopped on once the timer ran out, that's your image. Okay, now that you picked your piece of art that you really like, I would like you to copy it. Here's the thing about the copying part. You're doing this to learn. You're doing this to evolve. So don't worry about it being a plagiarism or anything like that. No, you're not planning on selling it, you're just learning from it. So right now I want you to look and examine the image very carefully. What do you see? What is special? How do you think artists created it? So the main question really is how do you think this artist created it? Look around it look at the lines, look at the details, look at the big picture. And once you do, try to recreate it. There is no right or wrong here. You can just go with your gut. 
you can either start with small details or you can start from a big picture and narrow down the details later and the thing is it doesn't have to be 100% exactly like the drawing you chose it just needs to be close enough to recognize it and if it didn't work out from the first time it's okay you can always try again so say if you started from details and then you found out that oh no, now it doesn't look like it or you know maybe proportions are off or you just don't like it, that's okay you can just stop, leave it or even finish it if you like and then create another one on the next page look at the colors that this artist used look at the lines Think about what kind of technique they used. You don't even have to use the same materials the artist did. For example, if you chose an oil painting but you only have watercolor, that's okay too. Because the thing that attracted you is not just the media. The thing that attracted you is something about this artwork. And that's another thing too. Try to analyze why do you think you're drawn to them. What is it that you like in this artwork? What attracted your attention? Is it the colors? Is it the mood? Is it a character? And whenever you start, there is no mistakes to be made here. You cannot make a mistake, so don't even worry. If you want to start with a pencil, start with a pencil. If you want to go ahead and just start drawing with a pen, that's okay too. You can even just jump on with a gouache or other paints, that's okay too. Be intuitive. Think not in terms of how exactly this artist did it. Your goal here is not to recreate their steps. Your goal here is to analyze the artwork and think, how do I get there? How do I create a work like that? And just go step by step. Don't think about it as oh my god I picked a masterpiece what I'm gonna do now I'm not good enough don't even start there okay because the goal here is to learn we are learning from people that we admire and putting yourself down will never get you anywhere so if you, even if you were drawing sticks and circles yesterday today this is your challenge today this is your goal so your goal is to get to this drawing as much as you can. Again, it doesn't need to be an exact copy, it just needs to be close enough. You can always try again, you can invent your way to get there. And don't push yourself too hard either, don't be so hard on yourself. Do you know how easy it is to criticize yourself? We are our worst critics and we are the only ones that basically stopping ourselves because if you stop criticizing yourself and instead of saying oh it's too difficult how I can do it I'm not talented all of that no forget it just dump all of these uh, thoughts in a big big trash can and close it from now on you don't dare to speak to yourself like that because we are learning you are going to get there if that's what you want you will get there and we will get you there but most importantly don't stop yourself don't rob yourself from this possibility to learn to evolve to get to the level that you admire because you are the one who's stopping you don't look at the whole thing if it's hard for you to start just pick a piece of this artwork to start from it can be a main character maybe it's even a, if you pick a portrait maybe it's an eye start with an eye and yes in a lot of uh, art schools they will tell you not to do that but here's the thing we're not in the art school right now we're not studying art fundamentals and we are not preparing for you to go to art school tomorrow no right now we're just discovering your inner artist and in order for you to do that you need to start somewhere so don't be afraid to start just let your thoughts flow let your hand go um, in Russian language we have an expression this expression means my eyes are afraid but my hands are doing it so basically that's what you're doing even when it seems like that's not something that you can accomplish just start and so once you start once you start moving you will get there as you might already notice 
my favorite medias are watercolor, uh, watercolor markers and ink. Those are the ones I like to use the most. And you are welcome to, you know, imitate or uh, repeat any techniques that I use as well. But also, if that's not something that you like, um, if not something that interests you or not the kind of style that you like, that's okay too. You can always choose your media. You can always choose what you want to work with. There is no pressure here. We're not here to learn how to draw. Like I said, this is not a I'm gonna draw and you repeat after me course. This is a course that focuses on you, what you like, what you are, who you are as an artist. And now to the most creative part. For this last part, you are going to take what you've learned from previous drawing and apply it in your very own one. So for example, if you were drawing a portrait of a beautiful girl with some, I don't know, like I just did uh, washed off techniques or if you were drawing some building, you are going to do the same thing. But in this time, instead of using somebody else's art, you're gonna be creating your own based on what you've learned from that previous artist. You can use photos as a reference, but it cannot be a photo of somebody's art. It can only be a photo, say, if you were uh, copying somebody's portrait, you can use somebody's photo, photo portrait, like maybe some girl or a guy or an animal or something. As a subject you can use it as a reference for your original piece and when you draw it just apply the same techniques that you did when you were drawing a previous artwork in a copy phase this part is more creative but also a lot of people find it more challenging because in this time there is no guideline you don't know what result you're going to get for sure but they just make the journey so much more fun the most important part of this exercise is for you to find art and style that you connect with. Figure out how this artist made it and then try to make it yourself. Maybe it's not gonna work from the very first time and that's okay because you're learning, you are teaching yourself and that's already a lot. You're doing a good job just by doing it. And the more you do it, the better you will get. So if you want to really nail it down, you can try and do this exercise multiple times. For the homework, you will only need to do this once. But if you want to do it a couple more times, uh, search copy paste, you can do it as well. And once again, when you create your own artwork, look back at the artwork that you copied. Look at what made it so special for you. What attracted your attention. For example, in the artwork that I copied, uh, I copied one of my favorite artists. His name, uh, artist name is Kellung Sloops. He has a, such a beautiful watercolor series. And I think what attracts me the most is the way he let his uh, colors bleed is this floating movement he has in his artworks I really love the dreaminess of it I really love how he transfers this mm, almost euphoric feeling and you can see some of it I apply in my art too but my art is still different it's still unique so what I'm trying to say um, if you look at my art, it's nothing like his, but you can still see some of the techniques here and there that I use that he uses as well. So this is not a plagiarism. I just learned some of the techniques from him and I applied it where I want to, where I like to, based on my personal preferences. And this is what's gonna make this so special. The more you learn, the more you try, the better you will get and it's like every time you learn something new, every time you copy somebody's work and then try to use this technique somewhere else, you will get this new tool. Think about it as getting a new tool. Because now, um, maybe yesterday you didn't know how to use watercolor like that, but today you know this uh, new technique. 
Maybe yesterday you didn't know about the dot techniques for pen, but today you learn. So this is all about figuring out what is it that attracts you and how to use it in your very own artwork. Because this is how artists find their own style, their own way. And sure, throughout the journey, even artists that created for years and years will change their style because we as human beings change too. And things that we connect will change as well. And that's perfectly normal. So just let this journey be a flow. Take it in, take deep breaths. Remember that there is no judgment or pressure. You're just learning and discovering yourself. Now, I would like to talk to you about the rules. So I just want to kind of let you know what are the rules, general fundamental rules, especially when it comes to drawing. Just in case if you feel like you want to research a little bit more about it or you just generally want to get an idea. Majority of those things I've learned way later. I was already able to draw um, I've been somewhat not bad in it. <laughs> you know, we, we get better every year. We get better all the time, so. But knowing those rules did open up some new possibilities for me. Uh, it did make sense. Uh, so I am glad that I've learned them eventually. But the point is you don't have to learn them right now or even ever. It is just good to know that they are, they, they exist. There are places where you can learn them. Uh, I will be including a document for those of you who are curious uh, with YouTube tutorials for each of those fundamentals just in case if you want to get a little bit more up close and just kind of find out wh what they are. Uh, if you want to pursue career as an artist or if you want to go to an art school, those will definitely come handy. Uh, some art schools, they do require to have some of those fundamental knowledges. Uh, and show them in your portfolio so you know in case if you ever feel like you want to be a little bit more academic about it those are good things to know art fundamentals are basically knowledge that has been collected for generations and just put together for you in a comfortable package to learn faster and easier and when you do exercises like search copy paste where you basically observe a photo or a person or an artwork you're already learning those things even though you're not realizing them so first thing that uh, we will actually even be applying in this course as well is shapes and forms the thing is before you can learn anything you gotta simplify it and every single object in our world is created from shapes and forms. Even though we might be not realizing it, but our head is actually a combination of sphere and multiple different shapes. Same goes for any single object. You can always break it down to rectangular spheres and other objects, other shapes. And that really makes it easier when the shape seems weird and overwhelming. Once you break it down, it starts to make sense. Now, another um, discipline and another art fundamental is perspective. And that one is not easy. Um, I myself have been having struggles with it in art school uh, and especially you know depending on what kind of art you do sometimes it can be challenging but perspective opens a lot of doors for you as an artist and uh, it's usually very useful for people that do concept art or manga comic books etc so basically perspective is a fundamental that teaches you how to find an object in a certain space from a certain angle and perspective. So are we looking at the object from down? Are we all looking at it from up? Is it a two-point perspective, three-point perspective? It is not an easy course, 
but uh, it is really great for those of you who would be interested in uh, you know drawing more environments or even making your comic book so shading really brings out this realistic feeling in your work because we do pursue a lot of things in real life in 3d dimension we have light and uh, our eye is used to seeing shadows it is used to seeing a value it is used to seeing uh, I want to say dimension and shading is exactly what can help you to bring this realistic feeling to your art. Anatomy is a challenging fundamental and it does take a lot of time to learn. There's an extensive course uh, I would say uh, in my art school we had many courses that had to do just with anatomy itself. But the good news is you actually already starting to learn it. When you're drawing from a photo or even another artist drawing, a lot of times you do observe and while you observe you're starting to study the anatomy. But you do start to learn those things as long as you use references when you draw. And so in a way you kind of already preparing yourself for this course. Now, I don't want you guys to get overwhelmed by all of those rules and fundamentals and all of that. Again, we're not here for that. And I just wanted to tell you about it just because I want to make sure that you have all of the information at your disposal as you grow, as you learn, as you go through your journey. Because if you feel like you already want to start learning some of those things, be my guest. I will be happy to make any suggestions for you in the future. And if you guys have any questions or you need to contact me, you want to ask for some advice or suggestion or maybe you do understand something that uh, was instructed, uh, find me on Instagram and just contact me there. I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Feel free to um, follow my Instagram, message me and ask any questions you have. Now for your homework, basically you will be doing the same thing that we've been doing through this today's exercise. Uh, create a pin interest account, create a board, pick one drawing from that board and use search copy paste technique. You can use it as many times as you want, the minimum is once, so you know. But if you do want to try and do it more times, you're welcome to. If you're not happy with how your copy turned out, you want to do it again, that's okay. You can do whatever you want. And I will see you guys in our next class. Goodbye.